I do not stand by in the presence of evil. Hello, Buildies, and welcome to this week's episode of Building Character, where we're going to be taking a look at the fiercest cyborg to hit the silver screens this season. Say that five times fast. Alita, Battle Angel. Now, if you'll excuse me, I should probably get this ketchup off of my face. Alita, Battle Angel, is the movie adaptation of the Japanese manga, where Alita is found by Dr. Dyson Ito as she lays languishing, deactivated in a scrap heap under the floating megacity of Zalem. Gaining a new body and a new lease on life, Alita quickly learns that she's more than just a discarded shell. Now we're going to be taking a look at the film version of the character, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, you should do yourself a huge favor and go watch it. I think you'll be glad that you did. In the meantime, let's take a look at what makes our cyberpunk heroine so awesome. How she make that face? Alita may look like your average anime-eyed manic pixie dream girl, but looks can be deceiving. Inside her synthetic chassis beats the atomic heart of a warrior. We'll be using the Warforged race from the Wayfarer's Guide to Eberron, specifically the Scout model. Let's see how this represents some of Alita's natural strengths. Well, artificial, but who's counting? For being a Warforged, we get a plus one to our constitution and a plus two to dexterity for being a scout. This is super strong when you look at the rest of her racial kit, so thank your corporate overlords in Zalem for some quality engineering. Warforged resilience gives Alita a whole host of abilities that really drive home how artificial her body is, even if her soul is perfectly human. Advantage on saving throws against poison and resistance to poison damage makes total sense for Alita. Even though she's mostly synthetic, she does have a circulatory system and a brain. She wouldn't be completely above poison, but her mechanical body takes much of the bite out of it. Immunity to disease makes sense as well, as the advanced URM tech that she's made of staves off illness. Alita doesn't need to eat, drink, or breathe. She probably enjoys doing all three, but it's not strictly necessary. Somebody get that girl some chocolate! Our girl's also immune to being put to sleep by magical means, and even though she likes a solid eight hours of shut eye, she can go without it and not drop dead of exhaustion. Instead, she can take a sentry's rest. That means for six hours, she's in an inactive state, but all of her senses are still online. No rolling perception with disadvantage just because it's lights out. Integrated protection is the representation of Alita's armored body. While she's not invincible, Alita is built to last and won't be rusting anytime soon. For a fighter as nimble and light on her feet as Alita, we'll be mostly sticking to her dark wood core option, giving her a boost to her armor class that depends on her dexterity modifier and later her proficiency bonus. Remember that, it'll come in handy. Alita can also take advantage of the light step and swift Warforged abilities. This means that she'll not only gain 5 feet of additional movement speed, letting her keep up with those pesky wood elves right off the bat, but she'll also be able to move stealthily at a normal pace without suffering any penalties. This is going to be the foundation for an extremely fast, efficient warrior. Like all of our builds, we'll be starting off with 27 points in our point by pool to stat up Alita. This makes sure that we're within Adventure League standards if we want to bring this build to our friendly local game shop. We're also staying within the Player's Handbook plus one rule if that matters to anybody watching. Now remember, these ability scores aren't a perfect representation of Alita's. It's just the closest that we can get to this character's feel when we build this out in 5e. Let's see what our ability scores look like. While Alita is a pretty strong cyborg, her strength comes more from her movement and the way that she's able to use physics to her advantage. We'll be keeping this average and put the points where we really need them. Now this is more like it. Boost this as high as possible because we can't get Best Dotaru to max out her damage and evasiveness without it. Having this at a 17 going into level 1 makes Alita a lean, mean finesse machine. Literally. While Allie is a tough customer, she's not a tank. Hit her too many times and she'll, uh, fall apart. Too soon? Like a lot of the builds we've done in the past, Alita isn't any smarter or dumber than an average person of her age. Though she is a little forgetful, we can chalk it up to being 300 years old. Jokes aside, average intelligence will see us through just fine. 
On the other hand, her intuition and innate focus are what make Alita so effective. This stat is going to be her most important mental one, so boost it as soon as you can. Finally, even though she can capture the hearts of millions worldwide, Alita isn't really a leader or a gifted orator. When she tries giving a rousing speech in the Kansas bar, it ends up going nowhere fast. If you're going to take this build into social situations, remember that you have one mouth and two big beautiful eyes for a reason. Watch twice as much as you speak, and let Alita's wisdom score notice things that the more chatty party members might miss. I didn't find a background that really gives Alita what we need her to have, so we're going to go with a custom background. Which you're allowed to do in the player's handbook. I'm calling it the URM Agent. Let's take a look at what it does for Alita. Athletics is the primary skill that I want Alita to have. She's got to have the athletic ability to keep up with fast opponents. She's often in spots all across Iron City where she has to run, jump, and climb her way across the environment. I'm also giving her stealth as a background skill as well. Alita was built to be a one-woman army, and she can assail even a highly guarded luxury estate with little in the way of negative attention. I gave Alita proficiency with Tinker's Tools and Herbalism Kits. While she's not a surgeon or an engineer like her adoptive father, Alita has been shown assisting in medical procedures and tune-ups. Finally, let's give Alita the by popular demand background feature. You know, it's fitting for someone who's a huge motorball star. Like all of my builds, this is just one of the many possible ways that you can build Alita. We'll be going all 20 levels to illustrate what a fully realized Alita would look like, but feel free to build her to any level that works for your situation. I like the class combination that we'll be looking at today, and that's going to be a healthy blend of Monk and Rogue. For Monk, Way of the Open Hand will help us represent Panzerkunst, the incredibly deadly martial art used by the URM Berserkers. When Alita upgrades to her Berserker body, she's able to use this ancient Martian fighting style to her full ability. She also possesses an inner flame, which can manifest as plasma fields. This will take the place of Ki in the flavor of this build, helping Alita channel energy into her weapon and through the sea of enemy cyborgs that she'll be fighting. As for the levels in Rogue, I thought that the Thief subclass would be a good fit. Alita is extremely agile and employs a very vertical fighting style, as well as having very keen reflexes. Being able to quickly interact with objects like motorballs and rapidly scaling skyscrapers is going to let you have the flavor of an urban adept, one who is completely at home in the rusted jungle of Iron City. For this build, we'll be going with Monk 14 and Rogue 6. Feel free to mix this up if you want. No armor here at first level of Monk but simple weapons and short swords should be enough for Alita. Also at level 1, let's go with Alchemist's Supplies for Alita, more in line with the technology and science-themed tools that we've been giving her so far. That brings us to the saving throw proficiencies we get at level 1. Strength is a niche saving throw. You won't see it a lot, but if you do, it's usually important. Dexterity is an incredibly common saving throw, so this is a fantastic part of Alita's toolbox. The last part of our class proficiencies we get at level 1 is a pair of monk skills. I went with acrobatics and history. Acrobatics is a really obvious choice, as Alita bounces around the battlefield like a chipmunk on speed. History is a little bit less of an obvious choice, as Alita spends the first half of the movie with a bad case of plot-induced amnesia. But little by little, she recollects her memories and becomes a living window into the last great war. Kinda neat if you ask me. I recommend that you keep an eye on your armor class, and see if Alita would be better off with the monk's unarmored defense, or if she'd be better served by taking a level in Rogue at that point to gain light armor proficiency. This way, she can use the Warforged's innate defense feature to get an edge on the competition. This is probably going to be the most useful if you're not able to max out your wisdom score, so keep an eye on it. Lucky us, we also get martial arts at first level. This lets us use that bonus action of ours to good effect by mixing in chops and kicks with our short sword strikes, and we'll be using our bonus action this way until we have some more tactical options in the form of the rogue's level 2 ability cunning action. At monk level 2 we're hitting the key related abilities. 
This gives Alita a lot of options, and even at this low level, we're capable of boosting either our offensive, defensive, or mobility related options by spending this resource. Think about your remaining key points before spending them, but don't be afraid to let them turn the tide of a fight. I like to think of this level 2 ability as Alita getting faster and faster as she gets more comfortable in her cyborg body, until finally she has motorball wheels permanently installed on her feet. Your speed will increase as your monk levels do, capping out at an extra 25 feet around at level 14. That's a crazy 60 feet per round as your natural movement speed before you can spend your action to dash, bringing it to 120. Now you're thinking with panzers. Your open hand techniques gained at level 3 make it easy to manipulate your opponent's physicality, either knocking them down, away, or robbing them of reactions until the end of your next turn. The end of your next turn. Trust me, your game master is going to hate that last part, but your party members are going to buy you around at the tavern after the fight is over. Third level also brings the ability to make ranged enemies a little bit more wary about tossing projectiles your way. You can toss back. Beginning at fourth level, you'll be able to slow your momentum when falling from great heights. Would have been useful for somebody near the end of that movie. At 5th level, you'll be able to use your standard attack twice. And that's all I have to say about that. Also at 5th level, use Alita's Fists of Cold Steel to really piss off your DM by stunlocking his monsters so that they die in two rounds. No, I'm not bitter, why do you ask? At 6th level, you gain the ability to heal yourself a bit as an action. I would flavor this as Alita rewiring an out-of-place bit of electronics or forcing a bent metal plate back into place. Get creative with it. Also at 6th level, you can channel that inner energy into your unarmed and armed strikes. No more bouncing off of enemies that are immune to mundane damage, Alita gets to use her plasma field to shred targets with extreme prejudice. At 7th level, Alita uses that impressive agility to dodge dangerous area of effect attacks, like explosions and energy fields. This makes your already capable dexterity saving throws even more useful, saving you from a lot of unnecessary damage. Also at 7th level, Alita can use an action to meditate for a split second and clear her mind of fear or shake off an enemy's mind control. She will not stand by in the presence of evil. And no, I'm not getting the ketchup bottle again. At level 9, Alita's movement options get even better, as vertical surfaces and liquids are no match for her speed. You might want to flavor this as an electromagnetic field that she can generate to propel herself across those uh, tenuous surfaces. For level 10, this is a little lackluster, I'm not going to lie. We're already immune to disease, but at least your internal systems will finally be immune completely to poison. Not a bad silver lining. Level 11 brings with it an even greater cosmic awareness for Alita. I would flavor the tranquility feature as Alita's threatening aura, that don't mess with me vibe that makes enemies have to think twice before engaging her. At level 13, Alita can understand and communicate with anyone, regardless of their language. Kawaii knows no borders. Level 14 brings us an amazing ability in Diamond Soul. I would flavor this as Alita being able to tap into her core, the synthetic heart that powers her with enough might to keep an entire city going. If she can access a fraction of that energy, she can enhance all of her saving throws and channel her inner fire in some amazing ways. Now let's dig into these rogue levels to see what the class can bring to this build. As far as the proficiencies go, we get light armor as well as thieves tools and a free skill. I would go with perception at rogue level 1. Rogue? Rogue one! Adding an additional d6 of damage at level 1 is really nice. 
Now we can describe Sneak Attack for Alita as her hitting the critical areas on other androids, their exposed joints and circuits. Situational, but if you work well with your teammates, you'll be in a good position to apply this force more often. Additionally, at level 1, Alita has spent enough time in the Kansas bar and around other bounty hunters and paid killers to be able to pick up on their lingo. It's good for some flavor if you're planning a very urban campaign. Level 2 brings us my favorite rogue class ability, Cunning Action. If you can't use your bonus action to add an additional attack this round, consider using it to hide, disengage, or dash. The tactical options here are pretty incredible, so think like a true student of Panzerkunst and take the fight to the enemy where they least expect it. Also at 2nd and 6th levels, we'll be getting Expertise for Alita. This doubles her proficiency bonus with certain skills and makes her much more likely to succeed in the face of a hard skill challenge. I would take Acrobatics and Perception at level 2, as well as Athletics and History at level 6. At third level, our thief techniques will let us become true natives of this dystopian future. Move fast, stay quick, and don't let any obstacle get in your way, little wing. Finally, an excellent use of our reaction, we have Uncanny Dodge at fifth level. When a big hit happens to tag Alita, she can contort and deflect as much as possible, minimizing the damage done. If you're all set on stat boosts, consider the following feats to give Alita the edge when it comes to taking down bounties and bar thugs alike. You can use Athlete to boost your decks and make yourself an even better rooftop traveler. Alita is an incredibly fast mover and this feat just makes her the Usain Bolt of cyborgs. Playing on the theme that Alita is a highly sensitive machine intelligence, take this feat to make it even harder to sneak up on her. Hard to take this warrior by surprise. Now this is a little out of left field, but there's some fun spells that could work well for Alita. Spare the Dying is very thematic, as is Sacred Flame. Protection from good and evil can round out the list, because remember, I do not stand by in the presence of- oh, alright, you get the picture. Hi guys, and thanks for watching this week's edition of Building Character. Alita was an amazingly fun build, and there's going to be a link in the description down below to her D&D Beyond character page so you can see it in more detail uh, if you want to go ahead and bring her to your gaming table. Next time on Building Character, we'll be resurrecting an old favorite. Stick around for the preview.